volleyball team this week plays Friday and Saturday at the Clemson Invite against a couple of teams they haven't seen before in South Carolina and Clemson. And coming off a home weekend here, we have head coach Kelly Sheffield to make some opening comments. Uh, th thanks for coming, everybody. The, um, uh, you know, certainly not the results that we were looking for this past weekend. Uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got some things that we've got to clean up, uh, obviously, and that will be what this week will be focused on. And uh, you know, uh, coming off a couple of days off, uh, looking forward to get back in the gym and and uh, very good, very good South Carolina team and a Clemson team that's certainly heading in the right direction, led by a, a former Badger. So looking forward to uh, to heading down, uh, out there this week. Questions, Dennis. So what did that reveal, those, the two nights, um, what did it reveal to you that you need to focus on that you might not have known beforehand? The, um, you know, I thought Mark, the Marquette match was just a, it, it was a great college volleyball match. I mean, I thought both teams, uh, there was a lot of high-level stuff um uh, uh, from both teams, certainly when it's that close, you can pull out some things. It's like, oh, man, th this play, had we uh, made a different choice or been able to clean something up, then it might have been a little bit different. But, you know, we had some really good swings to sweep the match, you know, against a 11th ranked team in the country. And, we, you know, they made some really nice plays. You know, it, uh, you know there was – uh, I think they got three challenges that that went their way right at the end, and um, uh, you know which uh, was fortunate for them and and not so fortunate for us. You know there was, you know one rally sticks in my mind in the fourth set. I think it was like 26-25, if I'm not mistaken, and Dana had a really nice swing and uh, the middle back and worst just really. Uh, crawled underneath that and kept that off the ground. And then uh, Madison had a great big time cross court swing that their setter just one hand jabbed and got that up in the air. And um, uh, and then they had an, uh, kind of a weak out of system swing that we should have stuffed. And it just crawled right between Dana and the net and, and dropped down and uh, that would have been it. And um, uh, it, you know, it's, it, uh, I think another play right there at uh, in the fourth, a serve. I think Barber serve clipped the net and just dropped over, and we're we're scrambling to keep the ball alive, and they ended up winning winning that rally on a free ball that we gave. And it just you, you know there were so many you know <laughs> game of inches things that it it certainly in key moments were going their way, and then we couldn't handle Barber serve in the fifth, and they got some separation on us, but. Uh, the Baylor match, um, you know, certainly not real happy. You, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't think we played particularly well. I thought defensively we had an awful lot of breakdowns, and our serve receive was, um, um, you, you know, not very good on on a uh, uh, in a lot of areas. And it didn't really matter who they were serving or the area that, of the court they were serving to. Uh, we just weren't we weren't handling their serving and system very much at all. And, and with the personnel that we had out there and the offense that we are running, it's uh, with the two middle offense. It's a tough offense to stop when you're in system, and uh, we weren't in system very often uh, that night. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think the areas we've certainly were exposed was was defensively, uh, you know, and that we felt like you know we got a lot of blocks this weekend, but you know teams were still scoring at too high of a clip, especially as the match was going on, and uh, you know, and our ball control was probably a little bit shaky in some big big moments. Jay, uh, you and your players rarely have weekends like this. Does it make it? Do you, do you not want to get right back to work, or does it make you want to get back to work even faster? You know, if you're going to have matches like that that's just going to knock you down and keep you down, then you're probably not going to have a chance of being very good uh, anyways. And so, uh, you, you know, I, I'd be that, – that's not this group. This group is a pretty resilient bunch, and, you know, and it's um, – 
uh, you know, there are certainly things to, to learn from, but, you know, these are two really good teams. These are teams that, you know, that are going to be knocking on the Final Four door. You know, they're, they're at that level of competition, and um, certainly you're not looking to lose and certainly don't want to do it in the field house, but this isn't things that we feel like, man, everything is broken. It's um, you've got to, get, and that's why you schedule challenging teams in the in the pre-conference to learn about yourself. And then we certainly learned things that we've got to get better at, and and uh, you know, but that would have been the case regardless of what the result was. And um, uh, no, I, I would expect uh, a team that's chomping at the bit to get back in the gym today. They've they've had two days off, which is is not too many times. In my career here, that we've given them back-to-back days off, but it certainly seemed like health-wise that that was probably a smart way to go about things. And so uh, we'll uh, we'll get right back at it here in a few hours. Kelly, I was watching your match on Thursday against Marquette, Mm -hmm. and the the video replay. You know, there were a couple of very very close calls. I, I don't know what what the referees have to look at down on the scorers table. But if they were looking at the same replays I was looking at on my HD TV, I have no idea how they called one of them in particular in the fourth set, overturned it, and gave the point to Marquette. Do they have? I mean, is it high quality, you know, monitors there for them to to see? Maybe more than just to some guy with the, you know sitting on a couch at home. Um, I think that took us to match point, probably the play that you were you, you were thinking of, and. Um, uh, you're not the first one that has said that from somebody at home that them, the TV and the announcers couldn't see it. Um, it, it here's what I know. I, I'm excited that we've got replay. And uh, certainly we need higher quality cameras uh, in the for replay. I think everybody agrees on that. And I think uh, that's an expense that hopefully um, we're not too far away from from picking up on, um, you know, but I'm not going to get too worked up about it. I, th- I, I think those things end up working itself out and, and, uh, I, you know, I'm just excited to have replay, you know, and I, I know, th- you know, the officials that we have are, are the best officials in our game and, and they're not supposed to overturn something if it's not clear, if it's not, uh, obvious, um, uh, what it is. And, um, you know, and so we'll just assume that that it was seen that was something that was very obvious to, to that wasn't so for the for the people at home. I, I, you know, I don't know how else to say it, but it's you know, I, I, I love the fact that, you know, I find myself a whole lot calmer during matches, you know, with, with replay. And so, you know, I think it's, um, um, you know, if it's not if it's not working 100 percent right now, I think we're uh, we're starting to trend that direction. And so hopefully more and more bugs can get worked out. But, you know, I do think we need, you know, last week and we played in a venue that had two net cameras. And um, and I think that would be beneficial for us to, to go across the board with. And certainly the going with more um, more frames per second. Uh, I don't even know if that if I'm using the right vocabulary, but if uh, uh, higher quality H- HD high def. I sound like I know what I'm talking about now. If for trending that direction, I think that'd be a positive as well. Any other questions, Dennis? In the Baylor match, I think Dana had 23 swings. Was that a product of your passing, not leaving her as an option, or could maybe more balls have gone her way? It's. Uh, I would say that was more probably our uh, our ball control than it was uh, the choices from um, uh, from Sydney. Uh, you know, there's you know there's always uh, you can't send every single ball her her way and and uh, <clears throat> when you're in rhythm, uh, you've you've got to get you've got to give some good stuff to to our pin hitters. It can't just be all garbage time because you want them to be able to play with confidence and you've got to be able to, you know, stretch your, you know, your, the defense out a little bit and, and, um, you know, but I, I look going back, I don't think the, the distri- distribution was, was the issue. It's, uh, I think that had a lot more to do with, 
with their, what their serve was doing to our passers or, you know, what our passers weren't doing at the high enough level that um, we traditionally get out of them.